Hey everyone, welcome again on the Stack. So in this mini series, we are going to work on the SQL Lite with the Flutter. So in the SQL Lite, what we do that we store the data persistently on the Flutter apps. Like being a Flutter dev, you need to work with the database as well. So this SQL Lite database will going to store on your Flutter app only. So it is a local database. Okay, so in this series, we are going to perform a CRUD operation. With help of this CRUD operation, you will get a basic idea that how to use the SQF Lite with the Flutter. So, like here, I have the plus button. In the plus button, I am adding two things: the title and the subtitle. Okay, and just after clicking on a save, we are storing that data on the local database. Okay. So if I will again refresh the page as well, I'm getting the data again because I already stored this data on the locally on the SQF Lite database. So we also have the option of the edit and delete. So we are going to perform a CRUD operation on this series. So you will get a basic clear idea. So let's start the coding. I don't want to waste time, but before moving forward, please make sure that you subscribe the channel. Okay. So you will get update and also like and share the video to your friend. I really need your help and let's start the coding. So we are going to work on the databases. So here I created a project. In this project, I have one folder called SQLite inside. I have home page. So if I will go on a home page, then you will find nothing. A scaffold with the app bar and the floating action button. Apart from that, inside the SQLite folder only I'm going to create a new file called database where we are going to write the logic of the database related thing but before writing the logic we need the packages of the SQF Lite. so let me go on a browser inside the browser we need two packages to use the SQF Lite. the first package is the SQF Lite itself so we have to go on a pubspec.yml file and put this package and the second package is the path provider. I mean the path. The path package provides some common operation like joining the path or splitting the path. We need inside our database logic. So after pasting it here, we need to hit the control S and Flutter pubgit will run and package will be installed. Now let me go on a database.dart file. Here we are going to write the logic of the database related thing. First, we need to create a class. You can create, you can give any name of the class, but I'm giving a DB. Second thing we have to is, we have to create a method. So inside this method, we are going to initialize the DB. So let me write the logic first, then I'm going to explain you. So it will be a future type, and it will going to return our database, and that database will come with the help of the escape light package only. And the name of this class will be init db i mean the method will be init db and as you know we are working with the future then we have to use the async and await and here what we have to do is we have to initialize the database so the first thing we need we need a path where we wanted to store the data so let me create a new variable called path and with help of the get database path method we are going to get the path of the database on the local file system that also come with the SQF Lite package only so we need to use that get, a, get database path method and it will going to give us a path on the file system okay and after that what we have to do is we have to return the database so we have a method called open database that also come on SQF Lite package and what we have to do here we have to provide the some parameter so the first parameter is we have to provide the database name and the path okay so with help of the path package we got this join method and here we have to provide two things the path where we wanted to store the database and the name of the database okay so now the first parameter of this open database is the path where we wanted to store the database the exact path like the file system path with the name of the database we already provided it 
Now the second thing we have to have in this open database method is the on create. So when this open database will execute, then this on create method will be also going to execute. So here what we will get is the we have two parameters. The first parameter is the database and the second parameter is the version. Okay. And it is also a, a sync and await type. I mean, it is also a future type method. So here and where we will, I mean, how we will get the version. So the third parameter of this open database method is version. So in the version, you can provide any version. I'm providing the version one as of now. And now let's work on the logic here. So inside this on create method, we are going to write a logic for creating a table on this MyDB database. Okay. So this database parameter, which we are getting on this on create method here, we have a additional method called execute inside this execute method. We can write a SQL queries. So let me write a queries for creating a new table on the database. Okay. To create a table, what we have to do is let me first create a multi-line string. So like this, we can create a multi-line string. And here we are going to execute the query of the creating a table. So the query of the creating a table is the create table and provide the table name. So I'm providing a table name like my table. And uh, we have to provide all the column over here. So let me provide the column as well. So the first column going to be ID, which will be a primary key and also an integer. Okay. So it, it is an integer type and it will be also a primary key. So I had to be very consistent of each syntax otherwise it will going to throw an error and this id will going to be auto increment so it will start from the one uh, zero and it will going to auto increment automatically okay we don't need to increment manually okay so this is the id and the id is the primary key and we required this id for updating time or deleting time okay and the second thing will be a title that will be a text and not null so it cannot be a null and the last column of this table will be subtitle that is also a text and not null and here we are not adding a comma because in SQL the last column we don't need a comma Okay, now hit the save with help of that the table will be created. But what about inserting a data on this table for inserting a data on this table? I'm going to create a new method that will going to return a bool if that inserting will complete it and it will also async in await type. That's why it's returning a future and before we will insert the data on the database, we need to create a model class of this uh, the data. Like, let me create a new file called data model dot dot. Here in a database, we have a three column, the ID, subtitle and title. So in a class, in a model class, we need these three thing. Why I'm creating a model class? Because when we get the data, I mean, when we read the data from the database, that data is kind of JSON format. And we, when we store the data, then that data should be in a JSON format. So for mapping and uh, to mapping thing, we need to create a model class. You will get the idea once I will create it. The first thing, the first column is the integer type. The name is the ID. And the second column is the title. The name should be the same while creating a model class and the third column is the subtitle. Okay. Now we also have to initialize the constructor. Okay. And 
we are using flutter 2.2 which mean we sound like a null safety as well so we will going to write the null safety code as well so here let me write the this dot id and uh, this dot title and this dot subtitle and if i were not using the null safety thing then it will not give any kind of error but we are using it that's why before the int we are writing the question mark which can be which mean that id can be null but in before the this title i'm going to use the required keyword which mean this title cannot be null and also the subtitle cannot be null okay so it the error will gone now we need a two method the first method will going to help us to get the data from the database and use it as a normal class object okay so from the database we need a json data okay so we need to map that json data in a such a way that we can use it on our app and the second method we are going to create that will going to help us to map this normal class object on the json data okay and that json data we are going to store on sql lite okay so the first method is factory data model from map so it will going to take json i mean string and dynamic type of variable name json and here we need a data model okay and here we need to map it so this method will going to help us for getting the data from the table okay i mean database so that's why we are mapping the json data to this normal object okay so basically for the working with the rest api also we create a model class so similarly we are doing here as well and the second method we are going to create is the to map so that will return a string map type dynamic dynamic okay and the name will be to map okay in here what we have to do is we have to map the each value so we can use it at the time of inserting a data into the table subtitle subtitle now we created this data model class and now we can use this data model class inside the this database so we will get this data model class as a parameter while inserting our data on the database okay okay and now inside this inserting the data i mean insert data method first thing is we have to create the the object of the database so the database object we will get using the this init db method so basically this init db method is returning the database and uh, with help of this db what we are going to do is we are going to insert the data and this db have a query called insert where we have to provide the table name so the table name is the my table and uh, the second parameter is the values and the values we are getting as the method okay and we are going to use the to map that will going to map the normal class object to a json object okay and at the last we are going to return true okay so with help of this insert data 
thing i mean insert data method we can insert the data on our sql database and now we created a table and now we are able to insert the data on the table and let's use it inside the home page and how we can use it the first thing inside the init state so inside the init state what we have to do we have to call this init db okay so this init db thing we have to call so for that we have to create a object of this db db okay so that thing is already imported here and inside the init state in slice this db to db over here okay now we have initialized the database okay i'm getting this error because we are using the null safety we have to use the late keyword null safety is kind of <laughs> annoying for me and uh, now here we created the db method and we can use this insert data method over here so we have to work on the ui as well like after clicking this plus button we have to open a pop-up screen where we have a two field called title and subtitle and this with help of this db method we are going to use i mean we are going to use the insert data method and going to insert the data on the table that thing we are going to do on our next video but please make sure you subscribe the channel like the video and share the video to your friend so in this series we have a three or four video only with help of this three or four video you will get a clear idea of the sqf light Okay, let's meet on our next video.